So before we take a deep dive, I want a show of hands of people who have sent money or if you know somebody who has sent money to Godman or churches, temples, mosques, or even put money in those boxes outside the religious statues. Come on, guys, show me a pretty much 100%, right? Good. It's not weird. There are 7 billion people on this, in this world, and 6 billion are religious. So if you had not raised your hand, there would have been something wrong. That would have been weird, okay? Now, let's try to understand who we send this money to. Are we sending the money to God? Or are we sending money to the Godmen or the religious institutions? You can argue that I actually did send the money to the religious institutions. If that is the case, you should not be upset when they buy a $100 million yacht or when they buy a jet or when they build a luxurious church. But that's not the case. Every time we see that kind of a news, we get upset because we've sent our money, even though we haven't explicitly said it, that it was meant for God, even though we can't see God, we can't touch God, we can't feel God, we expect them to do something in the spirit to either send it to a charity or somebody who is deserving. Now, let's think about why people do it. Let's look into some of the reasons. In the Semitic religions or the Abrahamic religions, like the Christians and the Muslims, it is written in their texts. Like, if you don't send this money, this percentage, whatever that is, one-tenth or 2.5%, you will go to hell. So you're scared. Most people don't even question. They send it. Now, if you look at the Hindus, they have different reasons because they have multiple gods. It's not a monotheistic religion. Now there, some of them will come up with the answer that, you know, I want to get X, so I'm paying Y. It's a bribe, right? You want to get it. So multiple reasons, none of them are wrong. None of them are right. It's up to you. But there's one thing, though. The money that you send goes to a middleman. It does not go to God. It goes to a middleman, which is fine because they're doing a service. They have acquired your trust. With this, I want to bring in some data points for your consideration. So since I'm speaking in Kerala, let's start from Kerala. A small state in India with 35 million people. We have 8,000 churches. We have 14,000 mosques. We have 30,000 temples. The Travancore Devasam board and the Guruvayur Devasam board each collects close to $100 million a year in donations. The Padmanabha Swami temple has assets or gold, it's, they say, worth $20 billion with a B. Now let's take the case of South India. There's 500,000 temples. Tirupati gets close to $1 billion in donations a year. Let's take the whole of India. Three million temples. That's more than all the schools, all their industries, all the hospitals put together, practically. Let's go outside, even further outside. Mecca Medina gets $16 billion a year. This is a lot of money. Now let's go to US. 400,000 churches, they get $200 billion a year. Now this is a large industry, the sending money to God's industry. Every other industry has been disrupted by technologies, be it manufacturing, be it pharma, be it finance. They have become optimized, they have used technologies. But this industry still works the same way as it has been functioning for 3,000 years or 4,000 years, whenever this started. So I have been fascinated by these numbers. The main reason for my fascination, which most of you could share with me, that the first one would be the fact that I was born in a conservative family in Kerala or in India, and my parents were sending money. And I always saw that wherever they were sending money to, was not optimized. Like if you, how many cents on the dollar or how many paisa on the rupee is going for a cause? 
how much of it is being squandered. This is something that most of you would have checked with your parents too, right? I have asked them questions like, to my parents, to my uncles, to my friends. Like, when you tell them about an investment to put in a company, they would say, oh, let me see the financials report. I want to see this, I want to see that, I want to know more about the founders. But the same amount they would send to a place which they don't even check what is being done with the money. Agreed? Okay. Now, the thing is, who are gods or what are gods? There are different explanations from different people. I'll say a few. I've had a theologian who told me God is love. Try to explain that to a five-year-old kid. You can't. You have to explain to him God is this all-powerful thing sitting in the clouds over there. That's much easier. Doesn't matter whatever is the definition of whatever the definition of God is. The question is, is there relevance to God? I think yes, because gods have helped us. Gods, religions, scriptures have helped humans evolve, have helped humans cooperate. Just like money has helped us evolve, money has helped us cooperate. Because money is fiction. And it is fiction that brings us humans together. We can cooperate so, uh, among societies. When I say fiction, what I mean by fiction is, take a million dollars to a monkey in a cage and see if he will exchange that banana for the million dollars. Would he? No way, right? Same way. Ask the monkey if he would give the banana for 10,000 bananas in the afterlife. We would. All of us do. There are bombers who bomb for 72 virgins in afterlife. There are guys that I've read that who have kept metal plates in their groin area to make sure that nothing happens over there after the bombing. Now, how about the relevance of gurus, priests, and people like that, or the pastors? Do they have relevance? Now, they're physical. They're not virtual like the gods. I certainly think they do. They have relevance. Why? Because they're like a coach. Even Federer and Michael Jordan has a coach. Because you need help. You're trying to get to a destination. Think of them as a GPS. Maybe they'll help you find the destination. So middlemen, these godmen, or the religious institutions, are somehow bringing trust. They're doing a service. Because many times, people who, who have told me that they send the money to the middlemen because they don't have the time to find which is the worthy cause. Perfect reason. Now, if they're doing all these good things, why do I think, or why do many of us sometimes think there's a problem? They're doing all these good things. The problem there is they get money. There's a huge amount of money flowing through this pipe. And because they are providing this middleman service in this transaction, they are able to put in a straw over there and suck money out. Still good, they're doing a service. The problem is they are becoming more powerful when they get this money. And getting power corrupts them. And then once power corrupts, they start censoring you. They start issuing fatwas. They say, what you should be doing. They get into bed with the politicians. They try to tilt opinions on where or who you should vote for. Take the US elections that happened recently. Social media data was stolen by hackers, allegedly, and it seems that they could tilt opinion, and because of that, the social media companies had been taken to congressional hearings. How many of our gurus, pastors, priests, preach to their lady and say, you should vote for this guy, or make statements. Like in the 2014 elections, I had, one, I had seen one of the major uh, gurus with the largest following tweet that, if you vote for this party, we would see the dollar becoming, having parity to the rupee. Who checks, who puts a checks on these, pay, on these people? The power that they gain, this power is enormous. They, the trust that they, we give them, they break the trust by living a luxurious life, by covering up sex scandals, and by making us fight for things that we really shouldn't be fighting for. So, 
This has been there always in human history. This piece has always happened, where the centralized, pop, the centralized party that's providing a service makes us do wrong things. Newspaper, they were the centralized power that was giving us information. They went into bed with the politicians, and they started feeding us wrong news sometimes for their gains. We have gone to wars. We have put people in jail, branding them traitors. And lo and behold, we as humans, we made the internet. We don't have to rely on centralized powers for our content or for that information anymore. How about money? Money is the basic thing on how we have evolved because we trade, we transact, and we exchange value. And governments hold us by our throats by taking control over money. And then what do they do for the trust that we have given them? They inflate the money. They devalue the currency. And they keep us in a debt trap. Lo and behold, the human ingenuity, we found Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized currency, so that we can break away from the government control. So the same way, any centralized power, be it the government, be it the religious, be it Facebook, because they, control, they pretty much control all our data, or our privacy. When they have so much power, they take, your, they take control of your lives, and you have to break out of that. And how do you break out of that? For that, I'm an investor. I'm a, I'm a believer in decentralized freedoms. So I'm making a call out over there. So if you want to build a platform, because now it's possible. With Bitcoin, it's been proven that we can take out the middlemen. The Byzantine general's problem, the computer science problem, has been solved. We can, we, there are ways to take out the middlemen. We can build platforms. We can take them out. Let's build it. Let's think about the free world. Let's not be brainwashed. Because freedoms, there are two kind of ways your freedoms are curtailed. One is when people show you the gun. It's very evident. The other one is when you're brainwashed. That is not very evident. You want to build systems that are not like a pyramid. The structural hierarchy that we have today is like a pyramid. And because of that, people are trying to get to the top, pushing others down. Because your power, prestige, everything comes more and more as you get to the top. Let's try to build decentralized systems where it is flat and we can cooperate and we don't have to think of ruling somebody else. And for this, as an investor, I'm always looking for projects. I'm always looking for founders. I'd be investing in them too. I'm looking for somebody to disintermediate these middlemen in the gods industry. Thank you for being a wonderful audience and thank you for listening in.